I went for the Platinum Trophy in Five Nights at Freddy's Help Wanted 2, and it was all in virtual reality. There are a total of 37 trophies, the Platinum itself, 4 Golds, 9 Silver, and 23 Bronzes. Firstly, I needed to simply enjoy the game, which included the dozens upon dozens of minigames available that would all inevitably need to be completed for a future trophy. It wouldn't be long till I got my first trophy for completing a night of Fizzy Faz without wasting any ingredients. This minigame simply had me working a drinks machine. An order would come through and I'd have to correctly make the drink while our fellow robots work on producing more ingredients. Oh, bonus revenue. First trophy. Uh, what was it? Complete a night of fizzy fairs without wasting any ingredients. The next minigame I decided to play was First Aid, where I would have to perform several procedures on Helpy. The patient is suffering from trampled by fans. Using the medical scanner, I'd have to scan the corresponding body part to identify what is wrong with it. For example, if Helpy's leg was scratched, I would have to use the medical spray and apply a bandage to fix it. Another example being if Helpy's eye was broken. It would have to be removed and replaced. However, removing it will cause Helpy to scream and alert the animatronic in the room. To prevent this, we would have to use the respirator mask to calm Helpy down and finish the procedure. And let's just say, remember to take the needle out before trying to put the mask on. But then I'll put it. Ah, oh, that's great. Liability risk. Get jump scared. After was Captain Foxy's Log Ride. As it says in the name, a log ride but with an added twist. It comes with a bull gun, and our objective is to fire at the colourful buttons to get more points. And I would accidentally get the trophy Splash Zone, which was finding an alternative log ride flume. I didn't know what caused this at the time, but this area is important to come back for a later trophy. I then went to the Fazcade and played Bonker Bon, in which we're given two mallets to smack Bonbon bon and Bonnet. There is also Helpy that spawns, and if you accidentally hit Helpy, you'll lose points. After clearing through the first round, Plush Baby is then introduced with an additional spawn to appear on our left and right. Plush Baby becomes the number one target, as if you fail to remove them, you'll get jump scared and lose. The trophy doesn't actually come from completing the minigame, but instead by smashing these light bulbs on the frame of the machine. Trophy, there we go, lights out, smash eight light bulbs. That's why you read the trophy list. Back to the main hub area, I noticed that I could move about by using the left joystick and went to the mystic hippo who would make me choose a card and it would then guess what card I have, which resulted in the Your Time to Shine trophy. Experiencing several mini games, I decided to check out Ballora Gallery. We have to make it to the other side of the room while dodging Ballora. Just like in the original game, she plays music and the louder it is, the closer she is, meaning we can determine when to stop moving, and considering we're in virtual reality, we can actually see Ballora move in real time. <laughs> oh, you're right there. However, there are also other nuisances like Biddy Bab, who I think determines how far to the side of the room you can go, as well as the mini arenas who get in your way. They also make noise, meaning we need to throw them away from us, and by doing so, we get the Tiny Dancer trophy. Right, go, go. What are you? Get out. Get out. Tiny dancer from a mini arena. The next trophy would come from being in food prep. This mini game has us serving food to customers. The order would appear on the main screen. For example, they want a fizzy faz pink lemonade, fries, and a pizza rito. We'd get our cup and place it to the left in the drinks machine, grab the fries from the front, and make the pizza to our right by getting the dough, flattening it, putting the ingredients on top, cooking the pizza, and then turn it into a pizzerito. Then finally placing it on their tray and ringing the bell would complete the order. But for this trophy, if you drop the food and pick it back up, it unlocks the 5 second rule trophy for serving food after dropping it. Going backstage, I would attend arts and crafts with some, and the first objective was to create a painting as we can see on the right monitor. However, we don't have all the supplies. This is where the dark gun comes in handy, and we use it to get the correct materials like the paintbrush and the art canvas. Make sure you remember how to create your colours, like adding blue and yellow together makes green. After successfully clearing through it, round 2 would have us make a paper plate creature. If the materials weren't shown, you could pull this lever to refresh them. You also want to make sure you're shooting accurately, because if you hit this light bulb too many times, Moon will come out and jump scare you. The trophy would come by actually noticing this bottle of glue to the right, and by consuming it, we 
get the trophy and its description says, you ate the glue, what is wrong with you? After playing more of the mini games, I decided to look further into the trophy list to see what I could get. I ended up going back to Bonker Bon in which I needed to only hit Helpy during round one for a trophy. Next up was a harder version of a mini game called Fazza Blast Western, in which we're given a Fazza Blaster and balls to throw at targets, and by hitting 20 targets, I got the trophy Bullseye. Next up, I was playing Body Bowl, a bowling game with random elements thrown in, like having Moon being a threat from above, or the chance of the frame moving closer while rapidly opening and closing to prevent you from knocking the pins down. After a successful round, I would get the trophy GGY for beating all the high scores. However, I'm not entirely sure which minigames count towards this. Going back to sister location, I would be in the breaker room with Funtime Freddy. The levers to the left would need to be held to charge the power of each meter to the right, and sometimes needing to hold two in a combination to power more of them. This would agitate Funtime Freddy and Bonbon, so they'll move closer. If they get too close, we use the megaphone to produce responses, so Funtime Freddy returns back to their original location. Instead of doing that, we let Funtime Freddy get as close as possible, and by booping Funtime Freddy's nose, we're rewarded with a trophy. I would return to food prep and use the source gun to shoot a server for the trophy food fight, then go to first aid, and just before finishing the procedure, you're ordered to give Helpy a candy. But if you eat the candy yourself, you unlock a trophy. This next mini game was called Carousel. We have to repair this carousel by replacing its batteries, readjusting dials, then soldering a new circuit board to it. You also have to worry about Moon, who is riding the carousel around. This is where we use the flashlight to shine the light on him to deter him away. However, for this trophy called Harvest Moon, we need to pick up this pumpkin to our bottom right and throw it at Moon. Harvest Moon. Hit Moon in the face with the pumpkin. Our next trophy would come from Bonkabon again, where this time I only had to use one of the mallets. It could be a little bit tricky as Plush Baby requires multiple hits, but after several attempts I would get the trophy, seeing red. After successfully getting those trophies and playing every possible minigame, the computer screen implied there were still games to be played, but they were either locked or corrupted. This is when I noticed a faz wrench on the table, and it could be used to unlock this door. Inside was a transmitter that I promptly closed, and on the wall there was this poster hinting to take of a mask. So I put my hands to my face to reveal an outline of a rabbit mask in the light, and by taking it off we would unlock the open your eyes trophy. It would reveal the world is much different to what we had been seeing. This would unlock the rest of the mini games on the computer, and most of them are harder versions of the existing ones. I would play First Aid Scrap Baby. This is where the procedures would get more complicated, like having to saw off Helpy's leg to be replaced. And of course, it would make Helpy scream anytime you use the saw. There's also this TV where it randomly plays adverts, so we use the remote to turn it off. After successfully replacing Helpy's mechanical lung, I would unlock the trophy Health and Safety for completing all first aid scenarios. I replay this level for another trophy, which was unlocked by throwing parts of Helpy at the animatronic threat. Remember the first trophy I got in Fizzy Faz? Well, I would unlock a trophy in the hard mode version, where it'd introduce another ingredient station. Everyone's favourite boss. I just ruined the jump scare. Give every ingredient station staff bot a break within the round. Next up is a mini game I haven't showcased till now, and it is in the backstage called the Salon. These mini games have you decorating the staff bots, Roxy, and Shattered Roxy. You'd have your screen to the right to see what makeup color they would like applied to each area, as well as the cosmetics. We would unlock the trophy by playing every round, and instead of following the instructions, we would paint the staff bot, Roxy, and Shattered Roxy with all the dark green makeup for the trophy. It's not easy. After taking the mask off, a new minigame was available called Endo Warehouse, where we would have to play pick and match with an endoskeleton in order to level up their intelligence. It isn't hard to begin with as there aren't a lot of cards, but the more you progress, the more cards are added. What's worse is that we have endoskeletons on our right and left who move closer when we're not looking at them. 
If they get too close, we use the Faz camera to get rid of them and the cycle continues. By successfully using the Faz camera on the endoskeleton, I would get picture day for getting the endos together for a group photo. I would end up returning to Shattered Roxy again because I actually had failed the level previously. It consists of three rounds, and she gets more agitated if you do not look at her, causing her to freak out, and we have to use this sound producer with her voice to calm her down. Look at me! There's also this random technological error that prevents you from seeing what makeup and accessory you should apply. Annoying, but manageable. And by successfully completing Shattered Roxy's makeup, I would get the trophy, Nobody Likes a Loser. The mask. Oh, that. Nobody the Likes a Loser. Make Roxy presentable. Back in Fazoblast, there were several hard mode versions, and this one was inspired by Five Nights at Freddy's 1. This time we would have three ways to destroy objects, the Fazoblaster, the throwing balls, and the dart gun. However, there is another distraction to prevent you from having your full attention on the game, and that is Plush Baby who randomly spawns in locations, and you have to shoot her to prevent her from jump scaring you. I assume this trophy popped because I successfully shot every single one. Another mini game I did not mention before, in Sister Location you have the Ended Game Mode in which we need to use the camera and close the corresponding door or vent to prevent Ended from getting in. There are several hard mode versions of this, and this trophy had the Funtime Gang being Funtime Freddy, Chica, and Foxy all attacking us. Funtime Freddy works just like in the original game, spawning in either of the rooms and saying a phrase for Bonbon bon to attack. Foxy who runs from the curtain but this time can go on either side of the room, and then the new addition of Funtime Chica who is attracted to this cupcake in our office, and moving it to left or right determines where Chica will move. By getting through the night without letting Chica get Mr. Cupcake, you unlock the trophy Cupcake Keep Away. Returning to the salon again, I would take one of the staff bots and dress them up to look like Monty the Alligator for another trophy. By taking the dark green makeup and applying it to their face, as well as placing the mohawk and rockstar glasses, would make Monty understudy pop. After completing the hard mode mini games and receiving prizes, there would eventually be a present on the main stage in the hub area. This present revealed a toy that played an advert about collecting every single one. After successfully opening them all and combining them together, we would be treated to the ending of the game and the trophy batteries not included. Even though the main story of the game was done, there were still several trophies remaining. Back in Fizzy Faz, I needed to make a graveyard. I had one of two ideas. Either let every staff bot get tired or create a drink with every ingredient, and it ended up being the ladder for the trophy graveyard shift. Next up was finding the memories in game that would eventually lead to the secret ending. Luckily a video published by Dorco ended up helping me out on this one, but you would naturally discover this in game by looking at the hints of graffiti in the main hub area. The first memory I unlocked was entering the code combination 1983 in the Ennard level. You can see through the gap of the desk to reveal a keypad, and by pushing your hands through the desk you can enter the number combination to unlock the memory, and this is how I got the trophy Remember Jeremy. As I said, I would have to unlock all the memories. The next one would come from shooting the rockets that spawn within each Fazerblast level, these levels being Fazerblast, Western, and Five Nights at Freddy's 1. This would lead to a hay bale falling down in front of us. The next Fazerblast level was based on Five Nights at Freddy's 2, and to successfully beat this we would have to play it like FNAF 2. We have the wind up box that we have to shoot to keep it stable, our cameras to each area, if we see someone in the vent we shoot the corresponding one to open it, and use our dark gun to defeat that animatronic inside. We'd also have to deal with Freddy who would spawn in the diner area, then he would enter the office, and we need to shoot the mask to get rid of him. For Foxy, we would need to shoot the light to reveal him, and then use the throwing balls to hit the targets. After eventually defeating every animatronic, it should cause a fire to happen, causing the hay bale to set the carny alight. After doing all of this, it would unlock Fazerblast based on Five Nights at Freddy's 3, and this is where we must fight against Springtrap, as well as dealing with Plush Baby like before. We use the flashlight to identify where Springtrap is, then use the throwing balls to knock off his armor, and then use the corresponding gun to destroy Springtrap. After successfully defeating Springtrap, we would unlock the next memory. In Bonkabon hard mode, we would have to clear through the level until it got to the point where we have to repair the machine. Normally, you would have to match the cables to the code, but instead of correctly repairing it, we do it in reverse for another memory. And remember Captain Foxy's log ride? We go back there where we have to hit Helpy several times throughout the level. This takes us to secret routes. In these, there would be a blue symbol that needs to be shot, and after successfully doing this four times, our log ride would take us to a hidden treasure chest for the next memory. Next up was going to Fazbear Theatre in food prep, where we'd have to trash every Chica related item. This being the drink, the chocolate bar, the chowder, and the smoothie. After throwing all of these items in the trash, a hand appears with the next memory. And the final memory would come in Fizzy Faz Night 3, 
in which you need to press the lockdown button and make a specific drink which combines the soda roni can next to the machine, then the four ingredients from the dispenser, and send the drink, granting us the final memory. After collecting every memory, a token spawns at the Mystic Hippo in which we can use on this arcade machine in the room we unlocked with the Faz Wrench. This would allow us to play Princess Quest, where we need to progress through the level defeating enemies and eventually reach the end of the level, where we take this elevator, which concludes the secret ending, and unlocks the trophy, Consequences. With both endings achieved, I still had more trophies to get, and one of them is going to be the worst trophy I've done so far, and that was to bowl a turkey and bunny bowl. But before that trophy, I ended up getting the You're Hired trophy for completing all minigames. You're probably wondering, what does it mean to bowl a turkey? It means to get three strikes in a row. And let me tell you, it was frustrating. There are many times I would get two in a row and miss the third one, or this attempt where I would miss, then get a strike, but it only counts as a spare, then a game, and then an actual strike. It had me in agony. It doesn't even count. It doesn't even count. It also doesn't help when sometimes you'd have the random elements appear like the alligators that move in a pattern to knock your bowling ball out. It must have been at least 40 minutes of attempts until I got the trophy, and to say the least from my physical reaction, I was ecstatic, even though the platinum is still yet to happen. My next trophy would come from collecting every prize from beating the minigames. As I had already completed every minigame, I decided to repeat the first level of Faza Blast as it was easy and relatively quick to unlock the trophy. This trophy called Lost Luggage is tied to the Princess Quest game, and just before you finish the level, you have these tombstones. Lighting all the torches normally would unlock the ending, but if you light them in a certain order, it causes the floor to rise and within inside is a chest with the bunny mask. Trophy 34 was to eat edible objects in the game forever and ever and ever. It sounds simple, like consuming every edible in each possible level, so I had to visit every food prep area to consume every possible food, even applying the sauces to each food to make sure I would get this trophy. Eat all the food in the hub area after unlocking them from the prizes, eat the candy in first aid, and even go into arts and crafts section where some materials are edible. And there was only one more trophy before the platinum, and it was to give the carny what it deserves. As I'm not entirely sure the actual requirement for unlocking this trophy is, all I did was use the Faza Blaster, Throwing Balls, and Dark Gun numerous times on the Carney. There we go. Heckle the Heckler. Why did that never pop before? And there's the Platinum Trophy. Shift completed. Five Nights at Freddy's, Help Wanted 2.